Hey everybody, Dan the Wolfman here again, and Wonder Puppy saying hi briefly. Uh, today I'm going to do a deeper dive on the Akidoka that fought in MMA that I was unaware about. A couple of my subscribers let me know about him, and I've literally just been talking to him on Facebook, and that is you or Yushi Shiori. So, minasan, keke desu ka? Watashi wa... Anyway, guys, so let's do a deeper dive on him so I can share my thoughts on Aikido or one style and how one style is not enough for self-defense or mixed martial arts, uh, etc. So he had a nine and three record, and that's pretty darn good, especially when two of the losses are to the extremely skilled UFC Bellator Ryzen vet. Kiichi Kunimoto. I've rolled a Kunimoto. He was very good. He was able to sweep me. Um, that's hard to do. So two losses to Kunimoto with a 9-3 and three record says, hey, let's pay attention. So let's look at the highlight video I made yesterday. Uh, we'll start with that. and We'll probably play it a couple times to break down a little bit about what's going on. So now, kind of a head pinch lateral drop there, but I would say his Tomiki Ukido background did give him some attribute sensitivity, etc., to be able to pull that off. See a nasty Waki Gatami there, two Waki Gatamis in MMA, one for the tap. That's pretty good there. See so how he didn't move his shoulder, he made some connection, pulled him down there, taking the guy's center. I'm not the biggest rah-rah Aikido guy in the world, no matter what uh, people want me to be. However, if you have a background in Judo, i.e. Tomiki Aikido, or you had a long background in Judo and some experience with Shotokan Karate, like the old school guys, a nice one-handed Katanagi there. See him whipping the joints. You hear he's going to stir the joint. I call that stirring the shoulder joint. I have videos teaching that myself, and that can be useful in knife defense in the baseball bat position. And simply lifts there. So he gets rid of his tension, and he's not moving his shoulders a lot. Uh, I probably muscle through things more. Let's, let's watch that again. That way I can break it down. See the Waki Katami for the tap there? It looks like he busted his elbow. I don't know. Flying knee, couple punches, single collar tie clinch exchange. Nice setup for the Waki Gatami there. Or for my shoulder shrug to Kodagishi to Juji Gatami that I've been doing for uh, you know many, many years and first showed back in 2009 in the early days of Ehow Expert Village and YouTube. Now let's watch some clips that I think no one gave him credit for. So he put his video up on his Facebook page today. Again, I've been uh, talking with him, and I thought we are doing a lot of the same principles. I thought it might be nice uh, for him and for you and for the Japanese audience, the worldwide audience, to have a bit of a breakdown. So interesting coming up from the ground. Don't you see he's really doing wave energy? Wave energy, stirring the joint, getting the kazushi, getting the guy off, uh, off, and then manipulating the angles in a three-dimensional space. More wave energy and stirring the joint there. More wave energy and stirring the joint there. Isn't that interesting? Principles apply to different martial arts. There was very nice keto circle there. And here as well for the kodageshi. I really like that. By whipping, it's a one-arm katanagi. Wave energy, stirring the joint, basically a shomanate. And these are things that I think I can apply in even a more realistic setting of live random grab defense. But I think we're doing a lot of the same things. I think that uh, the Aikido and the higher level Tai Chi and Bakwa guys and Sistema guys and Vasiliev and it's kind of all the same, um, you know, not when you're completely bad. Akidoka, like, high in his feet, dancy, prancy, harokes, but when you're an experienced guy and a fighter with a 9-3 and three record, again, two losses to a really top guy, Kunimoto-san, who I've trained with, rolled with, uh, is really quite 
something. So let me make sure I'm still recording here. So uh, let's look at his Tomiki uh, Keto competition days. He, I asked him, I asked him um, what background he had before MMA. Tomiki Aikido, he confirmed that. And uh, then I also asked him, besides the two elbow techniques, Waki Gatami, that I was able to find footage of, was he able to pull off any other, even though that's kind of a judo technique, Aikido techniques in MMA? And he said in training he was able to, but he said it was very difficult to in fights, was his response, paraphrasing. Uh, and, of course, we're using a translator for the most part back and forth. Um, but that kind of confirms my thoughts, which goes, please, you Akidokas out there, don't just be jumping, rah, rah, see, it's great, and that's all you need. Uh, no, it's not great the way you're training it. Uh, most of you and no, it's not great if you didn't have a judo background and you should have at least some kind of striking background, like, you know, old school, hardcore Shotokan karate or Kyokushin or an offshoot like Daido Juko, like myself, something like that. So, um, being well-rounded was always important. And even before UFC 93, even back to, uh, before Pancrase 93, even back to Daido Juko and Shudo days, 1986, know your history, even back to long days to Samurai. And now let's go back a little farther to Pancration 648 BC. Hmm. Being well-rounded is important. Oh my God. Stop the style versus style BS. You low level turds. Just trying to get views on YouTube. Okay. Let's look at his, um, Shotokan Aikido, Shotokan, Shotokan, uh, Tomiki Aikido. Now, I don't all love the knife stuff. There's some techniques that are interesting and can be pulled off. And using the Kazushi wonderfully there against the straight stab, but everyone's not just going to do a lunge stab on you in the real world. Uh, probably going to get nailed there for the Reimstein, even though... He's got this up three times, but I got, I got to say, I like this Rammstein song. I think I'm going to nuke that. Uh, before we go on, Tomiki Okido, as you see, uh, I've heard it kind of best described as judo at distance. So if you have a really angry attacker that's going to lunge at you, i.e. my daddy Steven's movies, uh, Kido can be inc inc incredibly effective, especially Tomiki Okido, because you get, you're able to do it in live competitions. So, yeah, you get good at it because... Tomiki was not only extremely highly ranked in Judo and Aikido, and you blend them together. So Tomiki is best Aikido at distance or when the guy throws his Kazushi away. And yes, untrained fighters throw a big looping punch, and it's not a lunge punch necessarily, but a big right haymaker and things of that nature. They give up their Kazushi, and you put them down. You break their structure. Um, so you will find similarities in Aikido and Sistema and Tai Chi and Bakwa. Um, anyway, let's keep watching here. Little neck spin there. Can't you find that in Muay Thai? Oh my God. Now that's pretty beautiful there. I can't say I've ever been that successful trying a technique like that through him there, but then got stabbed, but it was already, you know, so you got stabbed in the heart, but then you took the guy down with like a, almost like a running knee tap, which is a technique in Tomiki. Um, there's, and I think he was under the arm, so that was a Russian two-on-one, not even a walkie Gatami, which, but they're very similar, right? His right arm's under the arm in the armpit. And uh, boy, isn't that what I preach in my knife defense videos, which, by the way, look at my knife defense video and other videos, and I have a better compilation, three minutes of the best knife defense against live goes and whatnot uh, coming up. So make sure you're subscribed. Kind of a running knee tap. Oh, my God, it works in wrestling. It works in Tomiki Akito. Now, that's very much using good Kazushi there, and this stuff is all very ap applicable in MMA as well. From the clinch, when you create Kazushi, get the guy to strike back, give his Kazushi, um, you know, the clinch game is still a little underdeveloped uh, in MMA. So, obviously, we see that, and I'm assuming this is before his MMA competitions, but I don't know, nice walkie Katami there. That his sensitivity, his balance, his structure, the things that matter and able to sense the other guy's balance or lack thereof as they start to move back, and he tosses them aside.
Well, that could be very useful in self-defense, couldn't it? Especially versus multiple attackers. If one already has real judo, real grappling, real striking, real karate, or whatever, uh, before it. So, Tomiki is definitely better than regular Akido, other than maybe my daddy's tension Akido. But, um, you know, even the Tokyo Riot Police, they all have judo backgrounds. I'm sure he had a regular judo background probably even before Tamiki. Well, most people did because they studied it in high school and university. Another, oh, he defended the Waki Kitami, loose armed out of it, and he's making it so his four more on his forearm and not his elbow uh, there. So there was some nice Tomiki clips. Let's go over the end just again. I think that's beautiful. Uh, is there similarities to judo throws? I'm thinking Taitoshi, maybe. I don't know. I'm not great with my judo names other than the ones I use. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, let's see how that relates to MMA. Is this enough? Was this enough for him in MMA? Or did he start training MMA for MMA and uh, found it very difficult, other than those two Waki Katamis, to pull off any Aikido techniques in MMA. He said he was able to pull them off in sparring. I don't know which one's particular, but I can take my guesses. Probably similar to the ones I like. Kodagishi, Nikio, Katanagi, um, Russian two-on-one elbow breaker, you know, whether you consider that Aikido or not. Grappling is grappling, and Aikido is fancy sauce grappling for the older guys that have already done the young stuff. They're supposed to, not for Prancy Dancy Rokas. Okay, let's look at some highlights of him in MMA, let's watch the, uh, and then I'll go back, let's watch the, uh, off the single collar tie, the walkie Tommy for the tap there. Now, I'd say that's pretty darn impressive. Let's go back to the beginning here of Yushi Shiori. Yushi Shiori-san, or Yu Shiori, uh, is gone by a couple different names as well. Let me lower the volume down a bit. Hopefully I don't get nabbed for the music, but I probably will. All right, here we go. Uh, that first fight of his was in Shudo. Uh, most of his fights were in Pancreas and then um, some other organization as well. Again, nine and three overall records. Pretty, pretty impressive. Especially when two losses to top guys, because, you know, people bag on me for a three and three record. And look at the three guys I lost to. Two of them fought for the UFC light heavyweight title. Uh, um, three of them, all three were the most experienced fighters in the world when I fought them, where they're still three of the top, I think, six most experienced fighters in MMA ever, ever. So, you know, level of opponent matters as well. Not, oh my god, I lost two amateur fights. Or, oh my god, I had a street beef versus a ninja. <laughs> it's the crap that doesn't matter. Less than amateur is less than amateur. Amateur is only amateur, and pro is pro. There's levels to this game, baby. So he's got some busy hands here, and in that fight, it did look like he was kind of throwing some vertical punches. So let's go back here. Some good ground and pound. I mean, he's turning a bit, but they were pretty center line. So, I mean, some, you know, there's that nice pinch headlock slash lateral drop there I like. Uh, but some of those punches, I mean, Wishiba said 90% uh, was a Temi, right? Depending on who he quote, we quoting him. But uh, something to that effect, anyway, 70% or 90%. Um, a Temi. And when none of the keto schools are doing it other than like a fake to an entry to get the hands up, kind of makes you wonder, maybe you all should be training a little more realistically and don't even live on your laurels. Oh, well, we do this now because we're older now, but I did it when I was young. You're not training realistically. You're not training realistically. You could definitely make things more realistic. Hmm. Is this a keto flattening a guy out and hitting him in the head? So he trained MMA to get good at MMA and tried to apply his Tomiki Aikido when he could. So while I gave a couple awesome examples of Waki Gatami, which again was a standard technique in Judo until 1985. Good job there. 
And there's that Wakigatami for the tap. That's pretty impressive. Now, you can find videos on my 52 series versus 64 Big Henry. I'm hitting the Wakigatami a lot from the single collar tie. Um, similar, I use the two Russian two-on-one elbow breaker and knife defense. That's my priority, as you'll see in the videos. Um, of course, from the collar tie, I used to do more of the uh, shoulder shrug to Kodagishi to Juji Katami if I could pull it off. Rear naked choke clocks it to the left like a collar choke or the way that Danaher likes to finish. Uh, depending on position, there's at least two main ways you can finish rear naked chokes. And it does depend on the position. You could just do a back arch there as well. I mean, everything is positions matter and looking at things two-dimensionally matter. So anyway, uh, there's some UC Shore. Team Vamos, guys, go subscribe to his uh, YouTube channel where I stole those clips from trying to take the best that I could find. He only got 114 subscribers. I'm sure if he blows up to 2,000, he would be very happy. Um, so let's, you know, make this guy happy that even I was unaware of. Let's go back to some more MMA. I think this might have been like fifth fight or so. Uh, in the fifth gate, power gate five. I try to get away with a little music. Gets demonetized. Oh, well. All right. So we're going in here. Now he gets hit with the inside leg kick. Looks like he has a stronger posture and looks a bit bigger than, bigger than his opponent here. Oh, there's... Actually, I think that was uh, like a... Oh, gosh. Let's see. I think he gets grabs the head there. Wrap the left arm around the head. His opponent rolls Kazushi with him and basically gets into half mount. Half guard. Scoot, uh, hip escapes out. Or hip place out, I should say. Got nailed with the right hand there. There's the nice sequence. Flying knee. Couple punches. Single collar tie. Gets hit with the uppercut, but hey. Got the Waki Gatami for the takedown. That's a very energy efficient takedown now, isn't it? That's pretty good. If you haven't given me a like and a thumbs up, especially when this is done there, and give me a comment, at least give one a Wonder Puppy. At least give one a Wonder Puppy, guys. Come on, I need more comments. I need more interaction between yourselves. Fight the algorithm because they suppress freedom. So, you know, um, or anything even halfway manly like martial arts. Uh, as you see other countries ban and try to get rid of and make gyms close down and things of that nature. So on top here in the half guard, overhook wizard there to land that right hand, getting busy with the hands. See if you can throw him another pass, a little Toriando type action, throw him the pass, big right hand maybe. Oh, just decides to go in with some punches. Let's kill that music a minute. Gong. Gong dash. All right. Well, let's look here at round two. And this is all the footage I've basically been able to find of him. Notice he does have a pretty upright posture, which, you know, some people won't like when you're pure boxing. However, in overall fighting, and to make it, Aikido techniques work. Having a strong spine, a strong structure helps. It also makes your punches, if you're flat-footed, I don't like to be flat-footed, but as I get older, it makes your punches stronger, right? More connection. Uh, but having a strong spine to counter other people's techniques using sensitivity to be a counter takedown artist to do some of this stuff that i do having a strong spine a strong structure being one with the universe as your pull is centered to god the almighty as you get that aki power channeling through your veins comes in with some punches there a little left hook tries to roll underneath get a left hook i mean Earlier, we did see some more vertical type punches. And now in his career, you see maybe it's a little more boxing orientated. I have, uh, you know, obviously I was the first to do a straight blast in MMA, but I've used more the vertical punch karate style um, in my last 
few years. You can see my Sistema vs. MMA Better 2 video to be able to hit from underneath. And uh, I'm just, you know, slinging some punches, neither great from either guy. Let's be honest here. Like a little more connection, not bad right hand there, but a little more turn of the heel would be nice. Oh, I need nothing to knock him down now. Kit. Oh, knockout. So, guys, hopefully you like this look at Yuji Shiori, probably the most successful Akidoka in MMA. Not just people that were named as such, but really only dabbled a little bit later in life or whatever, versus when they actually were fighting MMA, like some of their lists that I am on. Um, I, I should ask Kathy Long. I'm sure she, besides just beating the heck out of guys with her striking, she probably just locked a few people out of the doors as well, just like I did back in the day in the very same uh, wagon wheel that um, Stephen first met his first karate instructor at when he was a dishwasher. So you have literally wrist lock people out of the same bar that Steven Seagal met his first martial arts instructor at. Uh, anyway, guys, make sure to make a better street jujitsu instructional on BJJ fanatics. I show you actual ways how to get all these standing locks. That's like a whole section of it. Look at to see similar principles and what you saw in the little highlight I made in the beginning of this or yesterday of Yuji Shiori. Um, Look at my finally actually good Akito vs. MMA BJJ for all these standing locks, Kodagishi, Nikyo Ayodori variations, Ben Elbow Cranks, uh, etc. Make sure you look at me, versatile Miki Akito master, and he competed in judo and Tomiki, so he was a, a good guy and a pretty well respected guy in the area, and literally uh, gets brought in by special forces to teach once or twice a year. Um, but look at me grappling him. I, you might find that of interest. So is it Aikido or even Tamiki Aikido enough in and of itself? No, of course not. Just like nothing is enough by itself and everything is everything. And uh, the fact that you suck is on you. Well, Rokas and other assholes. Um, so anyway, look at my system of breaking structure, random grab defense, combatives and street jujitsu. Look at my Russian Secret Service techniques, FFB, FSB, system Aikido, KGB takedowns. Uh, yeah, that's the titles I use to get some notice for people that might actually use it for executive protection. Look at my breaking structure takedowns. Look at my random grab defense videos. The other one with a ton of random grab defense, importance of life, pressure tested grab defense. Why aren't all styles doing that? For you keto guys that are loving the fact that I'm doing this, don't just go rah, rah, yeah, oh, God, we're awesome, we're the best, we told you so. No, your training methodology sucks donkey balls, and it'd be nice if you actually trained at least in the way of live random grab defense. You're the art that should be good at grab defense. If you were carrying two swords, I would take one from you and kill you. Because you're not training realistically, so you're not samurai. You stop living off the laurels of people that have been there and done that. Train realistically. For you Tumiki guys, at least you train competitively. Um, hopefully you have other background as well, at least in striking and understand that not everyone's just going to run at you and give you Kazushi. Um, so one style isn't enough. Look at my random knife defense here. Um, you'll find, I don't know. You'll find cotton Aggies in there. I'm sure you'll find some walkie, uh, walkie Gatami, I think two in there. Uh, you'll find Russian two on one elbow, snap down, break down, take downs in there. So, um, look at what I'm doing. Look at what he did in the highlights. Look at Vasiliev. Look at, you know, I can't name off the top of my head. Uh, I don't know a couple of you will throw some of the Kung Fu guys' names out there. I've watched some of their stuff. Uh, but it's the same. It's the same. You're either good or you're not. You either have structure-based balance, sensitivity, attributes, or you don't. And if you're just a beginner, you're just a freaking beginner. <laughs> so, once you reach purple belt and win at least two amateur MMA fights, then I'll call you intermediate. Uh, until then, the fake tubers are all beginner, less than beginners. Quite frankly, they teach things wrong because they suck. Um, but when I find a guy like you, Shiori, that obviously has some real skill, we should praise the people in no matter what style 
that have some real skill. So, if you've bared with me this far, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video and a little bit of ranting. Um, look at the people that are good and aim to be as good as the best people in whatever style. You know? Um, go back through my playlist. Yes, I've sparred. I sparred more pro MMA fighters around the world than probably any other human being for 20 plus years because most are too beat up after 10 years and I'm really beat up now. But I'm getting back on the mats with black belts at least once a week now. Hopefully next week will be twice a week. And as I come back from knee surgery, try to get better. And um, real self-defense is important that I teach in my instructional. And um, having tools to better protect your family is becoming more and more important. So anyway, guys, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think below. Get my instructional. It's four and a half hours long, often on sales. And, you know, if you think you support me, really support me, get that and learn how I'm able to do the locks. And if you think you're able to, go grapple some white, blue, purple belts in jujitsu. Visit a judo school. Let's say open grappling rules. See if you can pull off the stuff that I pull off. Let's get the proof in the footage. If you say you can do it, show it. Prove it. I mean, Rokas was wrong at everything just because he, he's trash and a lot of other things and thinks his opinions matter when they don't because you're a beginner. What happened to the old school ways? Take care, everybody. Kaboom.